Hi, welcome back to CS170 full session. Uh, we're picking up week two. We're looking at chapter eight. Uh, we're on to digitizing sound. Um, <clears throat> so last uh, last lecture, we covered videos uh, or pictures, I should say. Uh, we'll do videos a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> digitizing sound uh, is basically taking what you hear, uh, let's say music uh, or some sort of audio <clears throat> and uh, storing it uh, in a digital format, okay? So some of you may remember from your high school physics, uh, what the sound look like, right? Vibrations that are pushing air, creating waves, um, which ultimately hit something, right? Those waves hit our eardrums maybe. Uh, and then that will be converted to a signal uh, and then we process it uh, in our brains uh, as sound, okay? So over here uh, on the left-hand side, you can see various uh, types of sound waves here, okay? And they're basically showing you what is called a sampling rate at various sampling rates, right? Here is low sampling rate, medium sampling rate, and high sampling rate. Um, and as you can see, the curve is a little bit choppy, right? When you look at the low sampling rate, right? There's like a lot of space in between each time it samples, right? And then as you sample more and more, the curve gets smoother and smoother, right? And therefore a more accurate representation of the sound. Um, so you talk, about, you talk about the rate, right? So each of these slices here, how frequently are you taking those uh, snapshots of that sound, okay? Um, and that would be the rate here, right? And so uh, let's say in this case, they're talking about 44,100 Hertz uh, as your sampling rate. That's how many times it's sampling uh, this sound wave here, All right? Now the resolution is how many bits per sample, right? So if you look at these horizontal lines you're sampling is uh, essentially your vertical, Right, so how frequently are you taking the sound uh, either <clears throat> you know, at the highs or the lows uh, as it goes along the curve? Um, you look at the resolution, it's basically um, the, uh, how accurate is your horizontal, right? So going from left to right. Um, so how accurate is that, uh, that point here, right? Um, so it's basically two dimensions to your sound, right? So your wave has your up and down and your left and right, okay? Um, so that's what we're talking about here. Uh, and then the time is the duration of the sound, okay? Right, and then the bottom here is basically showing the formula for how you calculate um, the resolution, uh, not the resolution, the size, the size of the file, okay? Uh, so Nyquist, Nyquist rule for sampling just kind of says, okay, um, for what your purpose is, how many times or how frequently do you have to sample um, the sound, okay? So um, if you want to capture the highest frequency as let's say 20,000, because that's the range for humans uh, to hear a sound, um, then you go twice as high. So your sampling rate should be 40,000 Hertz. Okay, this is the, the common thing because generally we're talking about how do we make sound for humans to hear, right? So uh, if you wanna capture the full range of what a typical human can hear, that's the range that you wanna capture. And therefore the Nyquist rule tells you you wanna go sampling at 40,000 Hertz, okay? Um, I don't know how important this is. So technically it's a little bit higher than 40,000, 40, but I would just say 40,000 is close enough. Okay, just times two, okay? So this is goes back to before when we were talking about the resolution, right? This resolution here, we're talking about how many bits per sample. <clears throat> and like I said, if you look across, this is your left and right. So you remember your, your other sampling is going up and down here, right? So how frequently are you taking these slices, these uh, vertical slices essentially? 
now we're saying, well, okay, how much resolution are we getting uh, going left and right? So you can see here, look at the units here. It's like one, 10, 11, or something like that. Now we take it out another decimal place. You can see we get finer slices going left and right across that same sound wave, okay? And so that's what we talk about when we're talking about like um, the sample, uh, how many bits we're taking per sample, all right? That tells you basically how fine level of granularity <clears throat> you're going uh, basically on the X axis, right? If you look at this, this is your X axis here, okay? Um, so yeah, of course, just like your number line, you can go to infinity, right? And technically in terms of like uh, unlimited accuracy, right? But we don't have unlimited space, right? To store things. Um, so you'll make that trade-off. Same thing as like here, you are making a trade-off on your sampling, right? You can go for this very sparse and you can lose a lot of the accuracy in your reproduction um, by the same token, you can go for a pretty sparse going up and down and that you get the same loss there, right? And so, um, you know, you have to make the trade-offs there, okay? Um, so what it's saying here, right? Your typical resolution, just like when you look at um, your sampling, you're typically looking at 40,000 uh, Hertz or so uh, because of human, human consumption. By the same token, typically, um, you know, we're looking at 16 bits, right? That's kind of what people look at as your, your trade-off, right? To, to balance off like approaching infinity in terms of how much space you need uh, versus being practical and having relatively good sound reproduction, okay? Uh, so this is your bit def, right? That's the number of bits used to represent each sampling you're taking. So you can picture it's almost like, you know, as your sound wave is coming across, you have something that's just hitting it, pinging it, uh, and, and taking a picture of where that sound wave is at. Um, and so that's your bit depth um, used to represent each sample, okay? And so this just kind of shows like how you do the digitization here, right? So you have your sound waves over here, hits a microphone or something, right? And that's referred to taking it from analog to digital, Right, so you take all those sound waves, you do all that sampling and you know, you sample it with the appropriate bit depth, 16 bits probably. Uh, and then you convert it to all these zeros and ones. These zeros and ones go over to something else which will now convert it from digital to analog, right? Which is maybe the speakers, right? Um, and then that'll create these sound waves. So see if this, depending on your sampling, um, and your, your frequency, uh, so your bit depth and your frequency will tell you how accurately you can reproduce this sound wave compared to your original sound wave here, okay? Uh, and you get some of the similarities, uh, you know, in terms of like, what are the advantages here for digital sound with uh, digital pictures, let's say. Um, so, uh, you can do some various things to, um, you know, uh, enhance or optimize um, because you have the digital format. You can do all kinds of stuff with it, right? So here, like, you can get small errors out, right? So you can identify specific soundtracks um, and get rid of those things. Right, and you can do other things, just like we were changing the picture by making it brighter or darker or making contrast. You can also do things like this, right? And you could fig you figure it would be a similar type of uh, algorithm to do stuff like that, right? Uh, it's just a bunch of zeros and ones at the end of the day, right? So how do you alter it? Um, you know, you apply some algorithms, you identify what you want to change, and maybe you do a shift on it, right? Whatever that is. Um, so when you look at digital images and video, it's basically kind of extension of what we covered for doing the uh, pictures, right? You can think of video as almost like a series of images, one right after the other, right? It's almost like uh, maybe if you draw on a piece of paper, you draw a whole bunch of pieces of paper, 
like a similar type of uh, image to kind of make it like a like a cartoon or a video or something, right? Um, so that's kind of what video is. So a lot of the principles that you applied for basically your two-dimensional picture uh, basically translates into some sort of equivalent um, on your video. It's just in the third dimension and now, okay? All right, and so similar types of things you wanna do for calculation. Um, you know, you remember we were doing like the, just the picture, um, it was just one, essentially one frame, right? Now you're talking about pixels per frame, which is mo basically multiple pictures, one line after the other, right? Um, so you can see this, right? It's very similar calculation to what you did before, right? Calculating the number of pixels per frame or picture, right? Um, and this tells you how many bits per frame, right? Remember this magic 24, right? So you took this, um, that's the number of pixels multiplied by 24 bits. And this gave you, this gives you that, right? Um, and so the other thing you want to look at is you have 25 frames per second, right? So this is a third dimension now, right? So you're gonna be taking that and multiplying it by this, right? So this is how many per frame or per, per picture, right? But now you wanna multiply that uh, by how many of these frames there are per second, right? And this translates uh, into how many megabits per second, right? So this is your video, right? So all video, like I said before, all video is doing is adding a third dimension. Before, earlier, you learned how to calculate how much space you're using per picture or frame. Um, now you're doing it with video. You say, well, there's 25 of these pictures uh, per second. And so you just multiply your, your megabits, in this case, uh, by 25, okay? Um, and then you say, well, how many seconds there are uh, in your video, right? So in this case, we're saying there's 3,600 3, seconds, right? So you take this number and multiply it by 3,600, and you end up with 82 gigs, okay? Now, if you guys look at some of the videos that you watch, your movies or whatever, yeah, sometimes it gets to be this big, but generally it's not 82 gigs, right? And the reason for that is because there's compression uh, involved, right? Um, and there's different types of compression that you can look at, right? There's lossless or lossy, right? Lossless means that um, you do compression, you don't lose any quality at all, right? Uh, in, the, in the picture, right? Or the sound or the video. Um, and then there's lossy, which means you actually are, you're taking a shortcut, you're losing some uh, of your ability to reproduce the original image, okay? Um, so let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, like, you know, uh, we were saying for humans, you said your sound, you could only go up to 20,000 Hertz. For whatever reason, we decide to chop it off, we save a lot of space, and we only take it up to 15,000 Hertz, let's say. Um, well, that's obviously not the original sound, right? So then you've lost some of that ability to reproduce that original sound, okay? Now look here on the right, um, these are giving you examples of lossless and lossy compression, right? Uh, and, you know, something like these, it's very common. I'm sure all of you have seen like JPEGs, uh, MP3 and stuff like that, right? And probably for the medium that you're using, it's probably okay, right? Uh, it depends on how much you want to compress and shrink. Probably you can do like a reasonable amount of compression without like getting noticeable degradation in quality from a human perspective. Um, but you will get to a point where if you compress it enough, uh, you'll see things like pixelation and stuff like that with your pictures, right? You'll start to see like big squares and stuff like that. Um, that's when it's really bad, right? It depends, right? <clears throat> if you're doing stuff that, so like the picture that will appear on your phone, well, you can get away with a lot, right? Because your phone only has a very small screen size, right? Uh, if you want to display it on a big screen TV, that's a whole big, 
that's a whole big uh, difference, right? Um, so it depends on what you're trying to use to view the video or the picture, let's say, uh, how much you want to use uh, lossless versus lossy, right? Uh, like I said, you can get away with a lot on lossy if, let's say, you're sticking it out onto, uh, onto a phone or something. Uh, but you want to pay attention to these things, right? Uh, you may not be able to squeeze as much out of it with lossless, uh, but then you get the same uh, exact reproduction of the, the first thing that you got, the first picture, the first sound, whatever, okay? So here are some of the strategies that they have for compression, right? Again, removing sounds that are too high or too low to hear. Um, you can argue, yeah, that's lossy, but you know, you're getting essentially all that a human can hear anyway. So it doesn't matter, right? From your perspective, at least. Um, now you look at the video and picture compression, right? Video and picture kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, so you wanna pay attention to this part, right? What can I get away with, right? Uh, so uh, when it says here, it's like humans are sensitive to small changes in brightness, right? So if you're gonna try to, you know, get away by reducing the number of different things you're doing for uh, how bright a picture is, um, chances are people are gonna pick that up pretty easily, right? It's gonna jump on, they're gonna say, hey, this doesn't look too good or something like that. Um, so, you know, generally you try not to play around with the brightness levels, okay? Um, but people mm. are not as sensitive to differences in color, right? So then you'll start to see, uh, different things where you say, oh, this kind of grouping of colors here are kind of similar. And then they'll just kind of do some sort of like shortcut to kind of compress that to represent that in a smaller space because people are not as sensitive to variations in color. Okay. Um, and so there's, a, there's another uh, aspect of this. Um, you know, you guys probably stream stuff, YouTube, Netflix, or whatever. Um, and that goes over like something, right? It goes over the air, goes over the wire, something like that. Um, and so, you know, this is where you need to have very strong uh, compression at the same time. You want to have reasonable quality uh, for you to watch it and enjoy it on your, your home television, let's say. Um, okay. Um, actually, before I go into this part here, um, it doesn't really talk about it here, but probably one thing you'll see in the book is this idea of like, you know, there's a lot of repetition uh, of stuff, right? And uh, they might refer to it as run length encoding. Um, so basically, if you think about like, you know, digital, there's only zeros and ones, right? But let's say there's a whole sequence of like repetition patterns, right? It could be all zeros, it could be all ones, it could be like a series of zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, whatever it is, right? Some sort of pattern or repetition. And instead of kind of saying, oh, let me store like 10 exact copies of this same exact sequence, I could say, oh, there's this sequence and there's 10 of them, right? Then you can imagine that that takes up a lot less information or a lot less space uh, than if I just repeated those 10 things in a row, right? It's just a very simple example, right? But you can imagine you're looking for things that repeat and then there's a, a way that you would represent it to say, you know, whatever it is, right? 10, and I'm keep on coming back to 10, but whatever the number is, um, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, uh, whatever that repetition pattern is, say, okay, that's the pattern. And then how many instances of that pattern are there? let's say there's 10, there's 20, there's 30 or whatever it is. Um, so you store that rather than storing all these copies of the same information uh, one after the other, right? So that's, uh, that's an example of like uh, compression, which is um, lossless because we can easily reproduce that uh, original version uh, and you're not gonna lose anything, right? So that's referred to as uh, run length encoding, R-U-N. Uh, L-E-N-G-E-T-H uh, encoding, okay? I'm sure you'll see that in the book. Um, so, uh, okay. This is just kind of almost like a recap of what we discussed earlier, right? So you're talking about like how you translate, um, you know, everything down to bits, 
okay? Um, so you can talk about the character A, um, you can talk about like uh, digitizing sound, right? So you have that. Uh, you talk about how you represent a picture in a pixel, right? With a pixel, right? RGB, right? Um, okay. Uh, so basically the common thread that's holding everything together, it's bits, right? Um, so how you, how you interpret it depends on, you know, what you're using it for, right? Is this sequence of zeros and ones? Is that part of a file to represent a picture, a video? Yeah, it could be, right? And it depends on how you, you interpret those zeros and ones, okay? Um, and, you know, why, why do we talk about like compression, right? Uh, and, you know, let's say on the, on the sound, like how many times we sample stuff and what's the bit depth and stuff like that. It's because we don't have unlimited um, uh, pipes, right? Uh, so if I have something, either one to store it or two to send it to someone else, um, that's a lot of information if I really want to capture all of it, right? Uh, so we are taking shortcuts uh, through compression and whatnot. Um, and, you know, but the other thing is, can we make the pipes bigger, right? Um, so, uh, you know, they basically, you refer to it as bandwidth, right? Um, so I look at it as your, as your pipe, and you can transmit, right? It could be through the air or it could be through like physical wire, let's say. Um, so well, that's a little bit of a spelling thing here, high bandwidth, right? So bandwidth, right? And low latency, okay? Um, so latency is basically the time, right? Uh, so I send something, right? The time it gets to your phone or something like that, uh, that's the latency. Hopefully it can get there quick. Right, so I eat low latency, right? And like I said, the bandwidth is like a pipe. So the bigger the pipe, that's great. Then you can transmit more information through that pipe in one shot, okay? And that's just like the end of story checked here. You can take a look at that. This is not for extra credit. The only extra credit I want for this week is the uh, conversions for the numeric conversions, because like I said, that's a very important thing. You guys want to study that. I'm not going to correct um, those things, right? It's more just for your own self-study. So I kind of put it there so you can write it down. You can keep it in your notes. Uh, make sure you understand numeric conversions, right? Uh, but this is a check here, right? <clears throat> what are the colors that make up a pixel? Uh, what are they? How many colors are possible? Uh, what color is the absence of light, right? And vice versa, right? So full on light, max light, what color is that? Um, and in decimal, right, it's denoted how, meaning if I wanna take um, like absence of light and let's say full on light, how would I represent that in decimal, right? Remember three, basically three numbers, right? That you wanna put in there, okay? Uh, how do you decrease the brightness? How do you decrease contrast? You can flip it around. You can say, well, how can I increase brightness? How can I increase contrast? Um, how do we colorize a black and white photo? Okay, digitizing sound, right? Okay. And the check, right, another one. And then here's like the different topics that we had at the beginning of this slides. Okay, so take a look through all of these. If there's any questions, make sure you let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm not collecting any of this for extra credit, but you probably should go through this yourself uh, and take notes because these are exactly the type of things you're gonna see on the first exam, okay? All right, thank you and uh, have a good night.